Get over there, Ian. Over there. G'day, how you going? Ian Apolos here, your acrylic guru. Welcome to my live painting today. I'm going to do a live painting on a couple of snow mountains here. So please below and if you're not a member of my art group page request to become a member there and um, that's a good platform where you can share your art so I've got some free time up my sleeve this morning so I thought I'll come into the studio here and do a live painting for you all now I need to see what's going on here because I can't see the comments and this was happening this morning I think YouTube has a problem and if it does I'm not going to be able to do anything because I cannot see if people are there or not. All right. Um, what do we do? I'll go here. Let me just check. Um, I'm going to have to go. Sorry about this. I think there's a glitch in YouTube somewhere. So I'm going to try Google Chrome. Um, where are we? Get rid of that. Uh, where's Google Chrome? Here we go. Because uh, sometimes different browsers don't work as good as others. So bear with me here for a minute. I've just tried opening up the um, my normal YouTube video here so I can read your comments, but nothing is showing. All right, so please bear with me a minute. I, sh I think a lot of people have been having trouble with YouTube lately. I'm not sure. Let me just look at my phone here. Are people commenting there? Um, well, we've got 32 people here, so unfortunately, I don't know what you are all talking about yet, so let me see if I can get this opened up in um, Google Chrome, otherwise, um, oh no, where's my channel, I'm not even signed in on this one, sign in, what's my password, I don't know, hmm, hope it's saved, um, this is crazy. Bloody crazy. Continue. I'll go next. Hopefully it's all saved in there. Um, next. I'm not signed in on this um, laptop here so because uh, I hardly ever use it. So there we go there live. Now, now let's hope I can see the um, comments. Yes. If you manage a team, now this is a different. I've got to. I've got to take volume down. Now I've got you on the screen. Well, that was a bit of mucking around. Sorry about that. I had everything ready so I can just do a smooth and easy start this morning. Um, but that glitch is obviously. So what have we got there? We've just got Tammy Sharp. G'day, Tammy Sharp. We've got Karen, Marilyn, Bridget. Elba, Paul, G'day Paul, Grayscale, Elisa, Bridget, Richard. Uh, okay, so now we can finally get started. Sorry about that glitch there. Now, over here, I've got a, um, where's me? Come over here. Right, sorry about that. All right, so I've got me coffee. I mean, I've got some free time this morning and I thought instead of going to do something to my garden, because I don't mind gardening as well, I thought I'll come in the studio and I'll do a, a snow mountain scene for you American people that love that. Because we don't have them here, but I'll try and grasp it anyway. So I've pretty much hopefully got everything ready. Um, that's okay, Angie, do what you've got to do at the doctor. As you always have the replay to watch, okay, my love? All right, so um, I'll, I'll acknowledge you where I can, but this is a tutorial of a double mountain painting, so I need my applicating brush. A putter on a brush, a good old putter on a brush. It gets the paint right on there without any mucking around, and that's something you need is in your brushes, you need... You don't just need brushes to do your blending or your detailing or your scenery. You need a putter on a brush, all right? And I never even thought of that way back when I started until I stumbled across this little yellow handled thing. 
And I thought, wow, it's so important to have a great putter on a brush. So come on over here and we'll get started. I've got my coffee going there. It's not going to be neglected. It's almost half done. Oh, yeah. NY in the house, says Christine. Sharon, hello from Maryland. G'day. Anthony's just hit the thumbs up button. If you haven't hit me thumbs up, take an opportunity to do it right now. And also, this is a super chat. You have the opportunity for those avid fans of mine that like to support my content. There is a grey dollar sign down below at the comments there. You can hit that and support my content by sending me donations there, okay? It's an element that we have in our channels and a lot of people have been telling me to use it. So bang, it's there. Give it a go if you want to support me content, all right? All right, get over here and we'll have a go. I've got my paper towel. I've got, I think I've got the paints that I'm going to use. So we'll move you over. I've got all my water set up. Now let's come over here to the canvas. Get rid of it. Oh, golly gee dear. Golly gee dear. Let me, vacations off. Okay. You're live, yes. So hopefully it's still working. Where are we? I didn't have it on 4G. Ooh, naughty boy. Right, get the camera over there, Ian. Can I zoom in when I'm live? Yeah, but I don't need to just yet. All right, where's the canvas? There it is. There it is. You've got a good view of the canvas. Anyway, come down here to the palette. That's where the action's happening first. Okay, I've got my craft paint there. And a lot of you that follow me already know that I use craft paint. It's just a soft body paint. Look how soft that is. It's like a bit like cream, soft cream. But that's what I use to condition my canvas when I'm going to blend a sky. It's my way. Everybody has their own way of painting. And that's how your habits that come out in your work create your style. So you might see an artist that has a style of painting. Um, his style came to him or her because of their habits and what they like to do in their art. You can never, I don't think you can never yourself choose, I want to do this style. I think it comes to you. All right, so we've got this. Now we want a sky, a simple sky here because it's going to be a snowy mountain scene like they get in the America, United States over there. We don't get these sort of stuff in Australia, but... I'll give it a go. All right, so I'm going to go about halfway. Now I want to use my putter on a brush and I'm pushing that into there beautiful, like that. I'll come all the way. You know what? I'll do the whole canvas. I just realised it's a live painting I'm doing today and I haven't got time to stop and edit it, so I've got to sort of get through this before the battery goes flat in my camera. All right, there we go. We've got that done. I'll just check the monitor to make sure the camera's on the canvas there. All righty, simple, easy. Now we'll wipe this brush. I've got a rag. I'm just going to wipe the paint off it um, because... I'm going to add the blue colour to the sky. Now, I'm going to go a bit different. I'm going to go a bit French ultramarine blue here. No, I do not do oils, Bridget. I'm always acrylic, hence the name, the Acrylic Guru. Yes, I know it's still working. No, Ian only does acrylics. Yes, James Graham. Hello everybody. Do you celebrate Halloween in Australia? We've just started doing it. We never used to. Um, we've just started doing it and some people are into it and some people will go, oh, it's not our thing. But yeah, so it is happening here. All right, so this is French ultramarine blue. If anything, this is a bit purpley. I don't use it often for my sky colours, but we're going to give it a go. I just want something... Subtle for the sky. So we want the sky. We want a real sky colour. See, I was going to do this night time, sort of black and whitish, but I thought, no, I'll keep it real. So we've got our crisscross it in the corners there. I'm getting it on. The putter on a brush is just getting it on. See the white craft paint that I put on there? It's got the retarder in it. This blue colour, 
no retarder in it at all because it's all on the canvas. I'm just picking up a bit of white just to wash that down. Okay, there's pretty much the sky. I just want a very pale sky. Washing it in there. And we'll put some subtle clouds. Subtle but effective clouds, all right? Kimberly's finally made alive. Good on you, Kimberly. Now, I've got to wash this brush. So over there, this breaks up the monotony of the live as well. You get to see me move around my studio. I did forget me, me flapping bin. Okay, so I'll just clean this rubbish off the brush here. Okay. Again. Right, let's get back into it. So, we're back to the canvas there. Now, put some clouds. So what do I normally do? A lot of you already know what I normally do. I'll get the titanium white. Okay. Do we need, I think, yeah, I think yes. So I'm gonna find my light gray. I should have got that ready. I've got all these tubes up here ready before, but I didn't grab the gray. Where is it? Oh, where are you? See, when you're live, if something's gonna slow you down, it will. There it is, right over here. This is, it's a toning gray. And um, it's good to put some depth, simple depth, if you want, don't want to mix into your clouds. Now, I will put the colours I'm using in this tutorial in the links below after the, when the, the replay's there. So I've got my fan brush. Now, this is good paint out of the tube. So we've got the canvas prepped with the retarder and craft paint. We've got the sky colour put on neat. Neat means nothing added. Now we're adding the neat white for the clouds and some neat shadow weather colour in the clouds, okay? So we're going to have some mountains there. So I'm going to have one here and here. So probably want something whispering over our head. Make a shape, stamp it on. Oh my goodness, I'm having a lovely time. I could feel it in the brush hitting the canvas. That looks great. Pick up a blending brush. Um, discover what blending brushes are gonna work for you. Uh, there's so many different types. Now I've just got this type, I've got a few. Um, I'm using this one because I know I can get the bottom bum on the cloud. Get Putting bums on your clouds create the illusion that they're over your head and it's not just a flat fan of clouds on your painting like that. They're sort of coming over. What have we got there? We've got a bit of a white blob there, but well, nature's got all different weird and wonderful. See, so what I've done in my head, see what I did there? I've blended that in a way, so see the bottom of my hand? I'm feeling like that's the base of the cloud. That's what I'm trying to achieve there. I'll do a bit more when I add the grey. Then we can add the turmoil, the willy-nilly, bring some of that blue underneath within this white if we can, but I did put it on a bit light. So I'm going to wipe that brush. Now I'm picking up a smaller fan brush. All right, just a smaller one. Down here, getting the gray, okay. Now we're going to add the depth, the shadow color. To our cloud. So normally where the bum is, along the bum, and just spider finger it up there, throughout the cloud there like that, keeping the bum there and overlaid it up there like that. Overlaid means getting it there. That's a word I made up, I like making up words. So we're, now we're creating the bum, look at the bum on that cloud, like I showed you with the palm of my hand. This is just a simple effective cloud because the mountains and the snow are gonna be the hero within this painting, okay? So we've got our cloud. Simple acrylic cloud. 
get yourself really good acrylic paints if you want to do quality work. Okay, there we go. Simple cloud, eh? Now we'll get back to the other bit there. I've got to clean the fan brush that I put the first cloud on with because it's all contaminated with the blue paint. So I've just cleaned that, washed it and dried it. Now I'm picking up some more of the titanium white and we'll just balance it out and we'll put some other little fiddly bits within the sky there. What have we got? We've got 72 people watching. G'day, 73 people. Hello, Ian, says Leslie, Karen McHenry. G'day, Karen. Uh, we've got Renee. Uh, we've got a uh, we've got um, a cowgirl. G'day, cowgirl. All right, now we want to put some. Let's put some gap fillers in there. So we have those little whispery ones floating around on their own. There's going to be that mountain there, and probably another one here. So we'll put something coming off the page here as well. So I'm stamping it on, manoeuvring that white within the blue. It's created turmoil. He can sit in there now. I'm going to wipe that brush. Always wipe your blending brush as you blend. This little gap filler is just floating around like a piece of cotton wool. Look at the sky sometimes. You see these ones in the sky and they add a sense of realism to your painting. It's not a uniform pattern sky you've done there. Now this one I want a bum on him as well. So we're going to put a bum on him, wipe the brush and tickle the tops and get turmoil within that. Okay. Now I'm picking up that little fan brush again with the grey. We'll put a little bit of grey there. And oodilate that up through the cloud, leaving the bum on there. We'll set that back into the water. And then I want to blend that. Okay. There we go on there. Simple effective clouds for your acrylics. Now if you want to go a step further, which a lot of you know that I normally do, I put some yumminess in there. So those people who don't know what my yumminess is, I've cleaned my brush, I've got the cloud on, I've got the grey on. Now we add a bit more white and we, you know, we can create dimension within our cloud. Now see the vibrancy of that white that I've just stamped on? What you do is you sit that down, but you want to leave the vibrancy of it there. That's the yumminess. It's adding, so play with it a bit. Clouds can be difficult if you haven't painted many of them and you're frustrated that yours don't look real enough. Give yourself, do yourself a favor and practice doing clouds. If you like the way I do them, practice tickling the tops. Practice putting your yumminess into them. Do a whole page surface of just practicing stuff. And then you add it into paintings. There you go. That's just added a bit more luster to those clouds. That one's a bit... Anyway, we're getting carried away there, Ian. Calm down. Now, we're going to do some mountains. So I've got my putter on a brush again, and I pretty much want one here and there. And I'm going to use burnt umber. So come back down to the... Uh, easel palette. Palette. Always get them mixed up. Okay, so what have we got? Burn Umber. I feel it's a dark brown. So we've got Burn Umber. And I want some... I've got Carbon Black here. Whether you have Carbon Black, Mars Black, any black. This is just going to darken up my... This is the base for the mountain now, all right? All right, and I'm going to dampen me put it on a brush again. So I'm going to, I know my put it on a brush works great for me. 98 degrees there, someone. So let's pick up some of the black, not too much, and then mix this burnt umber. So it's not brown, brown. Put a bit more black in there. You can see that, I hope. Now this has no retarder in it. It's just the neat paint. This is a good quality acrylic paint I use. Um, the way you paint, when you find ways to paint, I can get such lustery colours with this paint. I love it. All right. Now I'm going to dampen my brush just a little bit more because we need transferring to happen. Transitioning from the putter on it to the canvas. Yay. Now this is... Um, I'm 
creating this so as we've got dimension, not just a flat mountain there. I want one behind the other. That's what I'm trying to create. So we're going to have um, this one up here. And I showed you in another video before how to get some realistic effects from a mountain. So there's one there. We're going to block it in just for now. And see that black and the grey, I mean the, um, well not the grey, the um, raw umber has created a dark colour. Now you've got your mountain. I want this mountain coming at us this way like that. Boom. Right from that point there, I want it to come at you. Where are you? There you are. So what we do, before we do go any further though, I've got to dry that because otherwise it's going to keep washing into it. The sky's done. We've done enough with the sky. I'll try and read some comments. We have up a... Can we get this sky dried? Now this is a canvas panel I'm painting on. Uh, a good quality linen canvas, tooth canvas that I'm using. Um, I do get a lot of people saying, my paintings don't look as good as yours. I don't know how much you've been painting or how much practicing you've done. It does take a lot of practice. And then it also comes down to the stuff you're using, like the brushes. I mean, not the brushes so much, but the, the paints and the canvases. It comes down to a lot of that as well. See how that's dragging? I've got to wet it a bit more because I want this on our mountain. I don't want to take too much time doing these mountains because there's a lot more to do in this. So we'll get that on there. Just paint it down there like that. See, with the good thing with acrylics, we can dry every section as we go. Now, like I said, I want this mountain coming this way. So what we do is we simply, let's use something. I'll use maybe this. You put that wiggly line, okay? That's bringing it towards the camera there. See there? And I'm not going to, with the brush, you'll create the shadowy lines coming down it like that, okay? Don't know whether you can see that or not. So we'll give that a quick dry. This is one mountain. Oh, there's a big long ridge there. Okay, that'll do. Now I've got some titanium white and we've still got some of the, um, I'll put that on that pile there and I'll put a little bit there. So I'll come down to the palette. If I can get that lid on that tube properly. Oh, I just noticed my coffee's over there. Now we want some, let's use a flat brush. Now first I'm going to mix, so I want a bit of this in our white there, okay? Just to get that shadow side. Okay, and we'll do this first. No, I'm gonna do this, I'm mixing it up. I needed to put detail in that mountain before I did this. So what I've got to do, I'll leave that there. I'll grab another flat. Now the, the paint that we use for the mountain, all right, let's get some a white and mix some of that up, just like that. Because I like to have, I might have to use this bit here, I like to have some shadow and values in the actual mountain itself, not just made with the snow. Now let's try that. Um, so we're going to come down that ridge there. The paint's dry, but a bit rubbery dry. So I'm pretty much coming down that ridge there, like that, see? Boom. Boom. There's a long line there. Some of this is going to be sunken back with the foreground. Okay, get a bit more on there, Ian. Stop being shy with the paint. There we go. So we've got some detail of the, the mountain. Get that in there. So I want this a bit... There we go. Pull that up there. I'm just going to add distance between this mountain and the foreground as I do it. So 
So I've done that squiggly line, it's given me a sense of where I've got to go with everything. Ah, oh, sorry, you were probably, let me see. Let's go again, I didn't have the camera moved up. So that squiggly line, I've got all this light shade on one side of the mountain and I'm pulling it out to this way, okay? It's creating a dimension of our mountain there. We can get some black. And then very gingerly get some black in there. I hate that when you don't move the camera, eh? I'm surprised I didn't get a million and one comment saying move your camera. All right. Now I'm going to use the black to get some... Clean the brush a bit. Get some darker values on this side. I'm going to wash it. Where are you? Get right in there. Um, we want the lighter colour now. So I want this. Come on, a bit more lighter, Ian. There we go. I'm following the lay of the land as well. So that's coming up there. Because this is where the other mountain's going to come in front of it. Okay, so that's done. That brush I used the. Um, I could have, should have dried it. So this is the the blue side of the snow, and I'm. It's coming down the mountain like that. You can see. I'll quickly dry it. So it's not going to mud up. I've done mountains before and they've only had a bit of snow on the top, but these ones are going to be pretty much covered in the snow. Okay, so I better mix up some more of that light blue there because I don't have enough. And this side will be the, the darker shadowed side of the snow going into there like that. Just quickly put some on the other side. Which is the white. I better clean the brush. I've left my camera up there because I don't want to... It's so easy, believe me, so easy to forget to move the camera and it can be so frustrating for you people there watching it. So now this side, we're going to bring some snow off this side of the mountain. Let, let it break up. Leave some bits of brown there, but let it break up. And we mainly want this ridge coming towards us. Just like that. Where are we? snow right in there. Break. I've got to put more white on there because the white that I've got, it's so close to the blue and I'm, I don't want to contaminate it. Just being so lazy can easily ruin a painting. Here we go. Let's bomb this on now. So the bottom here, I'm going to smear out. So there's our 
simple mountain full of snow and then later on this snow's dirtying up with the brown but later on if I wanted to I can um, add some really bright popping white highlights onto that like I'll get a bit more there I want a lot more down here there we go yeah I love that you could see all the rocks underneath see that white you put on was all dirty and then this other white you're putting on makes it pop anyway now we're going to do another mountain okay that was pretty simple so we've got our putter on a brush again and this one is going to come up pretty much here and I wanted that sunk back there, so I'm going to use that to sink it back. All the way in front here. Let's get that a little bit wet. Put more black in it, I need. So that's coming down here. In front of that. Get this peaked up there. And maybe just another little peak there. Bang. Now I'm going to quickly colour that in. Do what I did with the other one. But I'll put the other one Come down to about there, colour that in. Now I'm going to just pick up some of the white the on the brush and I'm going to see if this will work. Yeah, it should do. I'm going to try and just slowly bring that up the mountain like that so as we'll have atmosphere and distance between us and this because a mountain of this size is quite huge and to keep things in perspective is to keep everything with the right size of each other anyway that's working now I'm going to dry that I'll try and answer some questions While I'm drying it, it's acrylic paint and it enables me to control what I'm putting on. You might feel you don't need to dry yours, that's fine. Okay, um, back to the details now. So we grab my flat, I wash it. I want to quickly get this done. I'm a bit worried that my battery might not last. Uh, that mountain is very nice pyramid, yeah? <laughs> ah, well, now we've got to... Let's get some of this lightened up. And we'll do the same again. We want that... wiggly line there so that's roughly where my wiggly line will be we'll get some dark did I dry that yeah I did doesn't seem to be dry very well though I'm just sort of creating that wiggly line Just sort of blend that, make it look nice to the eye. Uh, 
And what have we got down here? We got this one as well. So we'll put this one onto some fall on there somewhere. About there. Okay, now we'll get our light blue colour on one side. Let's grab some more white paint and the blue, mix that up. Now this is our light shadowed side, I mean. Clashing with the sky, but once it breaks up with that brown a bit. Did I dry that brown? I think I did. I don't think I dried it enough. Okay, I'll give that a go again. into nothing there. Now it's just a matter of building all this snow up on this side. Maybe a bit here on this little one here. Come on, it's not really... Get in there, you. There we go. Like I said before, we can add extra highlights on top of this. All right, now I'll grab the other brush for the white side. But at least we're getting them coming at us. That's, that's what I was mainly trying to achieve. Okay, so this first coat of white is going to go on and it's going to wash with the brown or the black, the color of the mountain. We're going to create those ridges within it. There we go. I'm going to dry it some more, it's still wet. Do that again, get some more white in there, Mr. Eniapolis. Yeah, there we go, it's sitting on there now. Let it come down the mountain, there's a ridge there. Same here. Lot different to the way the um, oil paint, or painting artists do it. Well, I do it a lot different to the way they do it. They use knives and stuff. I personally, myself, feel the knives can't achieve it as well as it can for the oils. That's just the way I feel. But even all of us are different. We have our own different ways and likes. Get some more on here. How's that looking in the monitor? Not so bad. Get a bit more on this ridge now. Tell you what, I put more white paint on the um, palette and it's run out. I've got to put more on there.
might have some pockets of snow in there. Because like I said, I want them pretty much covered with snow. Quickly just grab some of the, the light blue. Get some of that a bit more detail because it's looking a bit undernourished for detail. Is anyone can tell me how long this has been going for? I've got no time. It doesn't show the time, it shows the people watching, how many are watching, but it doesn't say how long. Normally it uses, oh no, 41 minutes, got it, got it, got it, got it. All right, well it's pretty much a bit over halfway, so that's great. Anyway. Just remember, all my paintings that I do in my tutorials, the quality ones I put up for sale, all right, we've done that. Now what are we going to do? We're going to put some Payne's Grey onto the canvas. So we'll get that onto the easel there. I mean, not the easel, this is the palette. Payne's Grey, I find, is a bit like an oily paint. Got me coffee there. Oh man, that was cold. Um, some trees, some trees. What do we use for our trees? Let's dry that. Just along here where I'm going to put some trees. Because I want to get some atmosphere where the trees are going to go. Renee, I've, I've never used a fan brush for putting snow on the mountains, but you probably could. You, that, that, like I say, trial, practice and try things. Now I want to get some white and create, let's hope it's not too wet. I've got a brush like this. Where are we? Where's the camera? There we go. So I'm just going to load it up, get it over there, and I want some mist in front of me mountains, okay? So... I'm starting at the bottom. That's still too bright for me mist. Now I feel it's enough on the brush to mist in front of the mountain there. I want to put a band of mist where our evergreens are going to lay in front to create distance between them and these far away massive mountains, okay? So pretty much there. You don't need much paint on your little scrumbling brush to do this. I'm just scrumbling this in. It's quite easy to do. See that little bit of paint I put on the, my blackboard there? That's all I'm picking it up from. Put a bit more up there. Because I want to come mainly over here, create distance here. Yeah, that's all right. And a lot of distance over here, but we're going to have some other trees here. Can't see the mountain. Why can't you see the mountain?
Uh, Chris Miller can't see the mountain. Where is the like button? At the bottom of the video. Hit the like button, don't be shy. Hit that like button. Cost you nothing to watch a video like this. It cost you nothing to hit the like button. Cost you nothing to share it. It's easy and it just helps creators like me out. It gets our work out there. Okay, now I've got the um, forest, not the forest, I've got the um, Payne's Grey down here. Uh, what brush am I going to use? I'll try the fan first. I've got a few different fan brushes. So what have we got over here? I've got so many different types. I've got that type. Would that be too thick? Yeah, that's too thick. I want something quite thin. That's too weak. I'll try this one. Maybe, hopefully, it'll work. So I'm going to dampen it. Wipe it a bit. Now, this is the Payne's Grey. I want to use this. And if I want, I could probably add a little bit of white to it as well. Just like that, not too much white. And look at everybody now. Jeez, I hope he puts that camera up. I will. I'm, I'm just showing you how I'm bombing it on here first. And then we lovingly move that up. And I want to get some... Let's get this trimmed up first. I want them, at the moment, they're going like little smiley mouth. I'm going to start over here. I want these straight. So there we go. Get them straight. Load up your brush again. Get them straight. Dampen that brush a bit. You want good transferring to happen here because that mist you put on is separating the top of these from your mountain. Keep them close together, don't get too many big gaps in between them, otherwise it could look a bit... There we go, I'm leaving the tops. That's where the detail is in the tops of them. Every time I load the brush up, I'm conditioning the paint on it so it's going to give me the most sharpest. I'm going to quickly get along here, this is going to... It's getting away from us. Oh, you know what? I hope I've left enough room for the bottom half of them painting. More water on there. Put more water on your brush, Ian. Yeah, get it on there. I like this paint's grey. It's better than black. Now these bent ones will straighten them up. So if anything, I'm using, I'm hitting it and pulling down to keep these trees straight where if I was just stamping them I'm on well that's a straight one they were bending like they were on me before there we go now I'm picking up some of the white in the brush just to add some distance and the effect of like snows on some of these not too much though. That'll do for those ones. That's good enough. Good enough. I've got to wash me, um, I've got to wash me applicator brush because I need that for the bottom half now. We're going to get some white. Let's pick up the rest of our flowing white there. Before we do, I've got to dry that. I've come down too low on the silly bugger because I needed more room for the bottom half of the painting. 
Uh, but we'll work it out. Because I wanted a hill. Doesn't matter if it's a bit dirty because snow has shadow. This isn't the actual snow. I'm just conditioning the canvas up to ready to do the bottom half. We can come right up there. Now I'm going to wipe that brush. Uh, it's a bit big. I'll grab maybe me little scrumbler. Would that work? Uh, I want to join the bottom. So I'm grabbing... No, I don't want to put the white into the... No, that's no good. So let's fix that back up. I want to join the trees to the snow. So I've got some of the Payne's grey and I'm going to make my own shadows and hills within that snow and then I can create, if I get enough room, a bit of a lake. Just so we got that there like that. Where's my small fan brush? Here it is. I think this might help me. Let's see if it's going to help me. Just to get that sinking back into the trees. Because I'm going to use the white now to put on there. Titanium white to grab our snow. So I've got the shadow colours there. I want a bit more vibrant white on there. So I'll just pick up me um, put her on a brush. Yeah. And you can use this to make your different hills and wherever's that'll do good enough that looks like snow good enough now to bring the cows home on that where'd that other fan go there it is just to give it a sense of quality to your work we're going to pick up the fan brush that you did your trees again and just bring some of them make sure it's a white come here Make sure it's the right value and bring some of them, no, it's not wet enough, over that. Just so, see this line, they're not all the same distance there. Some of them are forward and some of them are back. So there we go. We're bringing some forward and back from each other. It's always good to break up the bottom line of your trees. Oh, I've got to try and do it from upside down. It's a bit hard. Yeah, we're getting there. Now see what 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 the deal is. The deal is here that the, the paint's still wet. That's the deal. That's all right. That's only a painting. It looks great. It looks artistic. Okay. Okay, so we've got our. What's someone talking about cows there? They want some cows in here. Do you get cows? He's got cows in America, I'm sure you have. Put some cows in here with some snow, snow coats on, eh? <laughs> uh,
Now, I do want to try, will we get, uh, see some of those trees, I've got to dry so I can bring forward. Fan brush, I'm using the Payne's Grey. No, actually, I don't want the Payne's Grey. I've used the Payne's Grey. I've got forest green out for this. We want some greenery there in the distance, those ones, so we'll put these ones up close with a bit of colour. Not too much colour, but enough to be recognised in the painting. So we want that a bit damp. Picking up the forest green. I don't have it too wet, Ian. So I'll wipe that off a bit and get some more paint on it. And we'll put a couple of um, a couple of um, evergreens up here, eh? Where are we? I might just put two. That'll do. Two of them will do, two of them will do. Um, how do they do these? Um, we'll get some. See, that's why I dried it. If I'll still hit the white a bit, but you don't want it to hit the white. Get some of the evergreen going there. I'm going to have a shrub in front of that anyway because these have got to have some snow on them to dry that. Okay, where are we? Some white. I washed that brush. I might use my little scrumble. I've got more control over it with that one. My little scrumbler here. We'll pick up some white. I tell you what, that green is still wet. And green and white's not a good colour to really mix, but we'll try and get some snow on there. On those trees. So we've got this one there and this one there. So this one is in front of that one. Work it out, that's still wet. I can see the wetness in that. I want to just dry that so I'll get a better job. Okay, so we're going to get some snow on these evergreens. Let me get my head out of the way there. I'll zoom in on the tree there. So I'm not bringing it where the other tree is because I want to be able to bring that tree in front of that back tree. You got me? I'll zoom in just so as you can see what's happening here. 
See, they look a bit stupid at the moment, but when you put the detail on, as everything, I might put my glasses on so I can get right in there. I want to get right in there and um, so long as you aren't looking down my ear roll, because I've got a lot of cabbage and carrots and vegetables growing in my ears. See, now this white on this side, I'll bring in front of that darker side of that back tree. Is it working? Yeah, it's working. One of the cats is on the bench there, Bernard Watson. Bernard Watson's in here today. And we can put just a little bit on there, just so they don't look left out. There we go. Let me look in the monitor there. Come down a bit. We've got snow on our evergreens. So hopefully that one looks like it's in front of the other one. I just don't like the white and green together, but it is what it is. That's all, that's all right, it'll do. Now, where are we? We'll put another group on the other side. Where'd my fan brush go? Lost my fan brush, lost my fan brush. Got it back. I'm gonna put a little bit of black in that forest green just so it's dark, because I don't want it greeny, greeny, green. Get some more water in it. Where are we? We're on the right side of the... Um, Right, we're going to go into here. Yeah, it looks sort of Christmassy, don't they? Where are we? So we're going to come there. And we just want maybe something here. Coming into the white sky. Bang. And maybe another one here. Bang. How's that? That'll do it. Neil blew it. All right, let's give these things some charisma. So we're getting the darker value and we'll lighten it up with the snow droplets on there. And it's not clashing with the, oh, excuse me, these background ones I've done in Payne's grey. So don't worry if the bottom parts join up with each other. You've, you're breaking that up with your highlight, your snow droplets or whatever. Okay. Get him out there. Give it some... There we go. Let's get this one. Where are we? Get this one going. I'll wet the brush a little bit more. So what I'm doing, I'm I ain't no expert at these, but I'll start at the top with some air in between it. Leaving some of the trunk there. It's winter. We don't get these trees here. I reckon if I saw one in real life, it'll be wow moment. We get, we get conifers here, different type of pine trees. They don't look like these evergreens. So I'm only painting what I can imagine they look like from what I've seen in pictures. Now, I'm blobbing this in front of there as well, but I've got to break up these two trees with their highlights. I'm not going to worry about trying to get a trunk in there because you're pretty much not going to see it. So I'll dry that and do the same with these trees. that dry that'll do doesn't matter if it picks up some of the green I've got my little scrumbling brush where's that paint there okay uh, I'm picking that up in the in this little paint this is the one I use to do conifers with now I'll put the camera back up I've dried that enough And 
we're on the left hand side so we'll do the left hand side of it very easily coming from deep within the tree there and out on the fronds or the pines now down here it already mixed up with some of the white so I don't want to go too crazy there that's looking good as it is okay that's on that side so now we'll bring that other tree in front of that one same again get some snow on there come from within the trunk and sitting over the branches that's what's in my head over the And this bit is already mixed up with the. So that's looking all right. That'll do. We've got a couple of. Um, oh, get out there, you! Yeah. Got a couple of pine trees there. Now we'll put some bushes in front of them, so we can do. I'm going to use just a simple. Where is it? The burn umber. Simple burn umber, and do them in snow covered in snow so where are we where's my brush I'll try this one I'm just going to use this brush here I'm going to wet it I'm going to pick up some of the which edge can I use oh it's too wet you see and we'll put some little bushes in front of the um, pine trees we just put there to sit them back I'll get some black into that as well yeah, that will work. But there's not enough paint there. I didn't put enough paint. So let's go again. And we want to sink this bush back. So we'll put something here, pretty much coming off the painting. making a bush now I want some air in the tops of them like that a bit more water on that so we transfer better and the same on this side we'll just put something front there I didn't dry it too well And now I want to dry it, so is um, the next colour won't mud up. Okay, now simple white on that brush. I'm just going to, it's, it's got that brown in it, but I'm, I'm picking up the white as well. And then I, if it's not white enough, I will put the actual snow on it. But I want bushes now, just bushes in front of each other. They're leaving some dark in there. Bang, it's simple. Gee, the camera seems like a million miles away, doesn't it? Where's me white? I need more white. I think when I buy tubes of white, I'm gonna to have to buy two at a time because I use quite a lot of white. Okay, so let's go over here. We've got snow on these bushes. Put one here. And another one. the bush oh, 
I want to get rid of some of that. I don't like it. So you just go over it. Don't like it. Now we'll highlight that. There's a bush there and one in front here. Okay, what do we got there? Got a couple of bushes. See, supposed to be in a river here, but I've run out of room. Um, I'm not the full quid on doing um, mountains because as you notice, mountains, putting them too high or low governs how much you've got left for the bottom half of your painting, which I do know that, but when I started painting this live, I um, didn't take that into consideration. And there's a lot of this that I don't like. I want to try and, but I'll do this off camera. I'm going to blur some of that brownie color out, get the white and trace back over it because I don't like some of these blodgy dots there, but I can do that later off camera. But we've still got our snowy mountains there. How's that looking? Yeah. So what have we got there? That would be pretty pricey to send to Australia. What's that? Oh, we've got... Uh, hi, oh, I just realised I was on my other account. No worries, Vermont. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm just reading some questions here. Comments. How about snow on a palette knife? Yeah, you can use snow on a palette knife. Let's give it a go. Um, I'll um, put some... Is that zoomed out? Yeah. Where have we got any room here? We've got some room over here. So I'll load up my palette knife. Who said that? How about snow on a palette knife? DS Sanders 92. Now, I'm not a great knife man, but I've got some knives here. What knife can I use? What knife should I use? And what knife? So we've got our knife. No, we've got our paint. So what I normally do, I spread it out like you're making the sheets on your bed. Spread it out. So you've got to film there, okay? Your knife's a bit all buggered up and dirty, but wipe it. Where's that paint? Make sure you can see it. And just get it on its edge and pull it through. Beautiful roll of paint. It's the best load you can do on a knife, the best way to load it. Um, we'll see. So we can get the crisp edge of the mountain. Oh, yeah. And break it up. Break it up. Come in front of that mountain. And you just keep slicing through that sheet that you made with your white paint. Now we're coming here. Bang. You do need the underneath with a lot of darks, so this hovers over it. And we've got another ridge about here. But don't hide all your mist. That's not too bad. We've cleaned it up a little bit. We've panel beaded the situation. All right, we're going to come down here and do the same thing there. Oh, lots of snow, lots of snow. And just in there, on that other little ridge, whether you knew that little ridge was there or not, I don't know, some of you might have. Beautiful paint. Look at the quality of that. I love it. I've got a ridge there, so I want to make sure it's noticeable. But anyway, we can do that till the cows come home. I'm liking that. 
It looks more snowy mountain, doesn't it, eh? 75 people watching there. Uh, wow, that looks great. Yes, it does, doesn't it, Renee? Sometimes I boggle my own mind. <laughs> I'm allowed to be cheeky. I try not to use a lot of paint and sure light touch. Says Gizla. Yes, thank you, Gizla. See, cows again. Yes, the cows. Is that what you're talking about with cows? See, I wouldn't mind putting a bird in there. Let's put an eagle in it, eh? Because it is an American scene. Where's my hand? Can you? Oh, my display's a bit slow. We'll put a bird in there. So what we need here is a brush. I'm going to use this brush. And um, we'll put an eagle somewhere. Oh, where? Oh, where can we put an eagle? I'm going to use just the... Oh, golly gee, where's all the dark? I need a bit of black. I'm going to just use... Black. Where'd Bernard Watson go? He went out. I love that cat so much. He's beautiful. Well, I've just got some black here in my little round brush, little liner brush, whatever you want to call it. And where can we put an eagle? Should I put an eagle in there? No bird, no bird. Oh, lucky, great. How about a dead pine tree too, says Stone Creek. Um, yeah, because... If I do a bird, if I do an eagle, I'm not sure what colour to do his eyebrows. And if he's a little one up there, you're never even going to see his eyebrows. Yeah, no bird. Uh, the clouds are so real, I can't ever get them right. Well, just practice, Donna. Just practice your clouds, that's all. All right, yeah, I won't do a bird then. Um, you know, there's snuff to this I can add to it laterwards. Let's go back here. So we can... Is that zoomed out? Yeah, where are we? There we go, there. Oh, I better, I better sign it. Heck, here can you finish a painting without sign it? Where can we sign it? I reckon I've got to clean that brush because that's what I'm going to sign it with. I'm just going to pick up the white. And then after I've signed it, we can whack a frame on it and see how it's going to look. All right. So we'll get this brush all loaded up, ready to sign there. We'll, we'll zoom in to there, under this corner here. Oh, let's see if this brush is going to work great. Now check the links in the description below. Like I said, I like to try and sell my painting tutorials so as it can support my art in the future. When I've got free spare time, I like to come into the studio and do tutorials for you beginners and teach you bits and pieces of what I find interesting in art and what you might find interesting in art. And we'll put Steve's little paw print down there as well. Boom, boom. Now let's whack a frame on that. Zoom out and see how it's going to look. Where are we? We'll get it ready for a frame. Okay, um, let's just close that light out there. Oh, you idiot Ian. Sorry about that. I've closed the computer and I needed it for the... Uh, I can't see. I could see there. Where are we? Forgive me, forgive me for being such an idiot. Anyway, we're not finished yet. Right, okay, we've whacked a frame on it. They look all right in a frame, don't they? The mountainy ones. They've got that, yeah, that looks good on the wall sort of thing, okay? We've got mountains coming at us. They're not just a flat one in the background there. Uh, why isn't my computer working? I can't see nothing. Just bear with me for a minute. So I'm going to ramble on a bit while, I were, while that comes on. Please. Enter. All because I closed the lid to get the glare out. Anyway, so we've got our mountain, snowy mountain scene. Some foreground bushes with snow on them. Okay. Um, oh, no wonder my computer turned itself off. So I've turned it on. That's why it shut down. I hope you can still see me. Yeah, where, where's 65 people there? All right, well, I'm going to come over here. All the way over here. 
you don't do that again when you're going live, Ian. My God. There, it's back up. It's back up. <laughs> golly gee, golly. Now I've got to open up. Um, where's my mouse? There, come over this side, please. Where are you? Go over that side. Um, where are we? I've got to... I've got to find me live feed again. <laughs> <clears throat> so, check out the links in the description below. Join my art group page if you want to share your work with me and a lot of other art followers on my group there. Um, there's links in the bottom there to see exactly how many different video subjects I have in my YouTube library there. There's over 280, I think, in there now. Um, Firefox is deciding to update. Now, all because I closed the lid. Here we go. It'll be just nice to acknowledge some of you before I rat rattle off. Um, okay, so bear with me a minute. Also, what else can I get out there to you as well? Uh, a lot of people, some of you are starting to know, but a lot of you just don't realise a lot of art takes just good practising, okay? Just remember you've got to practise to get up there if you want, okay? Some of us just think, and I've done it in the past as well, we just think, well, why isn't it working for me? Or, but it just comes down to practice, okay? Practice different subjects. Practice how brushes are going to work for you. Practice what subject is great for you. Not what subject, what surface subject. Goodness me. Where are we? Now let's get this back over there so as I can see. Now I've got to wait for the ad to finish. Video will begin in two seconds. Uh, I think there we go. There we go. We're back. Thank you. Looks great from that distance too, says Stone Creek. Yeah, squint your eyes and it's not too bad, eh? If you th um, Don't forget to hit the likes button, says Karen McHenry. Yeah, give me the thumb. What have we got? 56 thumbs up. Um, beautiful, sorry I missed the live tonight. That's okay, Carol. You, you can always watch the replay. Electra, hello, Electra. This, yeah, the frame does look good on it. Um, Bruce Anderson, uh, he disconnected himself. You rock, brother, says Randy Hightower. Thank you very much, Randy Hightower. That's a rocking comment to send my way. Thank you very much for that. All right, and like I said, there's also a link in there to see what paintings are available for sale of mine as well okay so knock yourself out with those links share like and subscribe and um have a great day all right and don't forget if you like what i do here behind my camera you make sure you tell everybody but if you don't like what i'm doing and if i've offended you in any way you tell everybody all right all the best goodbye good luck and good on you now i've got to go behind the camera and turn it off so I will say it's Uru from the Guru.